Today we talk about female infertility. By definition, infertility is failure to conceive within one year of regular and protected intercourse, and by any protected mean, no use of any method of contraception. And infertility can be either primary infertility, including patients who have never conceived, or secondary infertility, including patients who have previous pregnancies, regardless the outcome, but failed to conceive subsequently. Now, the incidence of infertility is about 15% and it varies according to the population. Regarding the major cause of infertility, it is due to 40% due to male factor, 40% to female factor, 10% combined male and female factor, and 10% without any cause and called unexplained infertility. Now, what are the requirements for the process of conception or pregnancy? Regarding the male side, there are three important steps, including number one, sperm production or synthesis, which occur in the testis under the influence of hypothalamus and pituitary gland. Number two, sperm transport, which occur through multiple channels in the testis to the main ejaculatory duct. And number three, sperm deposition, which uh, include the process of coitus and timing in relation to the time of ovulation of the woman. After deposition of the sperm into the genital tract of the female, they have to migrate through the cervical canal and on the uterine wall and, until they reach the fallopian tube and at the ampullary portion they fertilize the oocyte. This diagram shows the migration of the sperm through the cervical canal to the uterine wall and to the fallopian tube until they reach the oocyte and fertilization occur. And as you know, millions of sperm required for uh, to fertilize the oocyte. Uh, all of them, or majority of them, use or help in the destruction of the wall surrounding the oocyte, like corona radiata and zona pilosida. But just one sperm enter the oocyte for fertilization. This diagram shows the destruction of the oocyte's wall or surrounding wall by the sperm, and just one sperm enter the oocyte. After fertilization, the formed zygote, or the fertilized oocyte, which is called zygote, will be divided in hours and days into two cell stage, four cell stage, eight cell stage, and sixteen cell stage, which is called moriola, and then the blastocyst, which will be implanted in the endometrium of the uh, uterine cavity. This movement of the fertilized oocyte is facilitated by the peristaltic movement of the fallopian tube and by the ciliary action which found inside the fallopian tube. With regard to the major cause of female infertility, they can be divided into the following. Number one, anovulation, which is the major cause of primary infertility. Number two, tubal and peritoneal factor which represent the major cause in secondary infertility, uterine factor, number three, which prevent implantation, cervical factor, vaginal factor, coital and immunological factor. And if there is no cause found, we call it unexplained infertility. Before we start about anovulation, we have to know the physiology of ovulation. As you know, the uh, ovulation or the process of ovulation started from the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus secrete gonadotrophin releasing hormone and this gonadotrophin releasing hormone will act on the anterior pituitary gland and the anterior pituitary gland secrete FSH and LH and FSH and LH will act on the ovary they uh, the FSH act on the follicular growth it uh, causes growth of the follicle or maturation of the follicle every day the follicle will increase by two millimeter until they reach full maturity and by full maturity we mean uh, 18 to 25 millimeter at this time there will be maximum secretion of estrogen from the gravion follicle and this maximum secretion of the gravion of the estrogen causes positive feedback on the pituitary gland and causes uh, elevated or surge of LH secretion and this LH will cause the follicle to rupture and oocyte to release into the fallopian tube. 
this cross section of the ovary and you can see the maturation of the follicle under the effect of FSH until reach full maturity 18 to 25 millimeter then there will be a secretion of LH which causing rupture of the follicle and release of oocyte the remaining portion of the follicle will transform into what is called corpus luteum which secretes progesterone so regarding the disorder of ovulation can be divided into the following According to WHO, they divide the unovulation into three major groups. A group one, which is hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. Hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism. They have low FSH and LH level, and they represent 5% of total unovulation. Example of this condition, Kalman syndrome, Sheehan syndrome, and anorexia nervosa. Group two, normal gonadotrophic normal hypogonadism which means they have either normal FSH LH or LH is slightly higher than FSH and it represents 90 to 95 percent of causes of infertility and example of this condition is polycystic ovary syndrome. Group 3 which is called hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism they have elevated FSH and LH and they represent 5 percent of total cases of an ovulation and also example of this condition is premature menopause and premature ovarian failure and ovarian or gonadal dysgenesis and we can add the group 4 which is an ovulation due to hyperprolactinemia also one of the causes of an ovulation now what are the tests or how we diagnose ovulation of course regular cycle and mid cycle pain and sometime mid cycle spot or bleeding uh, it goes with ovulation but we have to do several tests to detect ovulation these tests include the following number one basal body temperature chart and by basal body temperature chart here we measure the temperature of the patient or the patient measure her temperature every day when rising from bed before eating or before drinking and we will see or if there is an increase in the temperature of 0.2 degrees centigrade in the second half of the cycle for three consecutive days it mean or it goes with ovulation so it is called biphasic temperature chart biphasic mean the temperature in the first half of the cycle lower than the temperature in the second half of the cycle so it is called biphasic temperature chart the uh, B uh, second uh, investigation is luteal phase progesterone level and here we have to do serum progesterone level on day 21 of menstrual cycle if the level is more than 15 nanogram per ml it go consistent with ovulation but if it is more than 30 nanogram per ml it confirm ovulation third test is urinary LH kit and by this as we said in the physiology of ovulation in the mid-cycle there will be maximum secretion of LH at mid-cycle when the follicle reach full maturity and this maximum secretion of LH in the blood appear in the urine and it will be positive by LH kit and it also uh, dating or uh, give exact time of ovulation which occur 24 hour after LH surge the fourth is by uh, investigations by ultrasound follicular tracking and here we use transvaginal ultrasonography to monitor ovulation we do it at 9 day 9 and day 12 and then day 15 we found the follicle size at day 12 reaching uh, 18 to 25 millimeter then after that there will be decrease in the size of the follicle and shrinkage which mean ovulation and the last one is endometrial biopsy and this is done on day 21 to 24 of menstrual cycle it will show secretory phase by histopathology which mean progesterone effect which mean ovulation this test nowadays is not done because it is invasive if the test of ovulation reveal that there is abnormal ovulation in such case we have to do hormonal evaluation and the hormonal evaluation including day 2 serum FSH LH and the prolactin and accordingly we can uh, determine the type of ovulation according to the WHO 
if they have normal FSH LH or LH more than FSH, it means group 2 and example polycystic ovary. If FSH and LH are high level, it means group 3 or ovarian failure. And if FSH LH low level or, or undetected, it means hypogonotrophic hypogonadism or group 1. And if prolactin is increased, it means anovulation due to hyperprolactinemia. Other investigation may be necessary sometime, like including serum, testosterone, thyroid function test, anti-mallurian hormone this is used for, or to detect ovarian reserve, inhibin, and estradiol. Now, if the patient proved to be unovulatory, so the treatment of infertility due to unovulation include the following. According to the cause, group 1, hypogonadotrophic hypogonadism, they have low FSH LH level. In such case, we have to give exogenous FSH and LH. And this is either by pulsatile gonadotrophin or high dose gonadotrophin given on daily injection or on daily basis until we reach a size of follicle of 18 to 25. The second group, which is the commonest group, and as we said, to present 90 to 95 percent of cases of anovulatory infertility, an example of those are polycystic ovary syndrome. The option of treatment include the following: number one, weight reduction, and in the weight reduction, our aim to decrease the weight by five to ten percent, and to maintain body mass index between 25 to 30, and this is done by diet regime, changing lifestyle, and exercise. Number two, clomiphene citrate, and clomiphene citrate trade name is clomy tablet, 50 milligram. We started from day two of menstrual cycle to day six of menstrual cycle, starting with one tablet per day, 50 milligram, and if there is no response, we increase the tablet or the dose to 100 milligram per day, it means two tablet, and maximum dose 150 milligram per day, three tablet per day for five days, and we monitor our treatment by transvaginal ultrasound done on day 12 of menstrual cycle. If follicle mature, then we have to give HCG for to rupture the follicle. Number three, tamoxifene, 10 mg day two to day six of the cycle. Number four, gonadotrophin. And gonadotrophin, if there is no response to oral ovulation induction, we have to give uh, injectable uh, drug for ovulation induction. And the gonadotrophin are uh, contain many type, sometimes FSH and LH, sometimes only pure FSH, and uh, we can give it either on daily basis from day two, or on alternative day, or combined, or combined sorry with oral ovulation induction like with the clomid or with litrozole. The side effect of gonadotrophin is multiple pregnancy and ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome. Number five, litrozole. Litrozole is aromatase inhibitor. Tablet 2.5 milligram can be given from day two of the cycle in two tablets, morning and night, and for five days also from day two to day six of the cycle, and we monitor our treatment by doing ultrasound on day 12 of the cycle. Number six, metformin. Metformin is insulin sensitizing agent, and the dose of this drug is 500 milligram three times daily for three to six months. This is useful especially in patient, an obese patient with PCO. It lower insulin level and subsequently lower androgen level and enhance the process of ovulation. And number seven, if all the above measure fail to achieve ovulation in the patient, we have to shift to surgical method and the surgical method called laparoscopic ovarian drilling. This is very good operation and give very good outcome in a PCO patient. Now, if an ovulation due to hypergonadotrophic hypogonadism in group 3 of WHO anovulation, and they have high FSH LH, so the only uh, way to treat those patients or to get pregnancy is by oocyte donation and IVF. Number four, if an ovulation due to hyperprolactinemia, in such case, we can give dopamine agonist, an example of these drug, cabergoline dose next tablet, 0.5 milligram, every three days for four to six weeks. And bromocryptine paralodil, 2.5 milligram, twice daily, also for four weeks. But this drug associated with 
uh, undesirable side effect like vomiting, hypotension, and headache. And the third one is equinagolid. And we monitor treatment by doing serum prolactin in the second day of menstrual cycle. If prolactin returned to normal, mean uh, it is treated. Otherwise, if prolactin continue to be high, we regard, we regard, regardless of the treatment, in such cases, we have to think about pituitary adenoma and we have to do MRI of the brain. The second cause of infertility is due to tubal and peritoneal factor. And regarding tubal and peritoneal factor mean either blockage of the tube, which prevent the sperm and the fertilized oocyte to pass through the tube, or adhesion, which prevent the tube from pick up of the oocyte. And this account for 35 to 35 uh, percent of all cases of infertility especially it is major cause in patient with secondary infertility and the uh, complete tubal obstruction or partial tubal obstruction may be due to either infection salpingitis uh, due uh, uh, the post-abortal perperal gonococcal chlamydial or tb it may be due also to surgery adhesion may be due to surgery like appendicitis any pelvic surgery pelvic abscess, endometriosis, and uh, any pelvic, prolonged pelvic inflammatory disease. Now, how we investigate for tubal and peritoneal factor? We have three major investigation for to detect tubal and peritoneal factor. These include hysterosalpingography, and this hysterosalpingography it is radiographic investigation, in which we ask the patient to come on day. 8 to 10 of menstrual cycle and we inject radio opaque dye by special cannula to the cervix and to the uterine cavity and by x-ray we will find the passage of the radio opaque dye through the fimbrial end of the tube so it give idea about the patency of the tube and also give idea about the shape of the uterus and if there is congenital anomaly of the uterus or if there is polyp, submucous fibroid, septum or other abnormality. The second one is laparoscopy and laparoscopy is the gold standard in the management uh, in the investigation and management of infertility. It give idea about direct visualization of the uterus the fallopian tube, if there is any adhesion, if there is any endometriosis, and if there is any other abnormality. And also we can inject dye through the cervix and see the dye coming out of the fimbrial end. And we can treat some cases of mild endometriosis or mild adhesion by laparoscopy at the same time. So it is the gold standard. Number C, sonohistrography, and this is by ultrasound. We inject either normal serine or a special dye through the uh, cervix by a special catheter put inside the uterus, small size catheter, and we inject the normal serine or the uh, special dye and see by ultrasound the bubble coming out in the pouch of Douglas or the in the adnexia, sorry, which means there is patent tubes. Now, if the uh, uh, cause of infertility is due to tubal factor, so the following option for treatment are available. The best option is in vitro fertilization. The second option is either tubal surgery, microscopic abdominal tubal surgery, which include re of the tube or opening of the tube, or laparoscopic tubal surgery like opening of the tube or re of the tube or adhesolysis, and all of them have uh, a low success rate. Now, if the infertility due to uterine factor, as we said, uterine factor prevent implantation of fertilized uh, ovum, and this may be due to absent of the uterus, TB, endometritis, intrauterine, adhesion, submucous fibroid, polyp, uterine septum, and luteal phase insufficiency. The diagnosis of uterine factor done by either hysterosalpingography or by hysteroscopy. Hysterosalpingography give idea about if there is any abnormality of the uterus, septum, uterine fibroid, submucous fibroid, polyp, and other anomaly. While hysteroscopy allows direct visualization of the inside of the uterine cavity and 
can treat some cases at the same time, like if there is polyp or septum or if there is submucous fibroid. If the infertility due to cervical factor, it may be due to impenetrable cervical mucus, loss of cervical mucus due to amputation, comb biopsy or diathermy, infection or special chlamydial infection and immunological and by immunological mean antibody against the sperm. The diagnosis and how, or how we diagnose cervical factor by two methods, either by culture, we take swab from the cervix for culture sensitivity to detect the microorganism responsible for infection and treat it at the same time. The other test is what is called postcoital test and postcoital test, just to give you an idea about it, although it is not used nowadays. And postcoital test, we ask the patient to have intercourse and within six hours, they come to us, we take sample from the endocervix and examine cervical mucus and examine under microscope. If there is more than five active motile sperm in high power field microscopy, it means that there is no immunological factor. But if all the sperm are dead, it means there may be immunological factor. And the treatment options available is either intrauterine insemination, in which we bypass the cervix, or sometimes uh, they use steroid if suspicion of immunological causes or antibiotic in case of chronic infection. Other causes of infertility may be due to vaginal factor, purulent discharge, tumor or septum, coital error like frequency of coitus and time of intercourse in relation to the time of ovulation like if the male is or the husband is military or not available at time of ovulation or if there is dyspareunia or excessive use of lubricant, or if there is congenital anomaly in the penis like hypospadus or epispadus, or if there is retrograde ejaculation. And the last cause is immunological due to antibody either in the cervix against the sperm or in the blood. And if there is no any cause found, we call it unexplained infertility. Thank you.